Boise State, uh, their opening game at Georgia Southern, uh, 13 and a half point favorite. They failed to cover 56 to 45. So they failed to cover not because of their offense, because of their defense. Let's start with their offense, though. 651 yards of total offense in that game on the road. And they showed a pretty balanced run slash pass offensive productivity. Uh, they have a star running back in uh, Ashton Gianti, uh, who ran for six touchdowns last week. Teddy, I think he's off to a Heisman Trophy type of awareness anyway. Um, and also the the bad part of the whole situation is against a uh, team that really isn't top-notch. Uh, they gave up 45 points and 461 yards of offense, and Georgia Southern uh, torched their secondary throwing for – uh, over 350 yards in that game. Oregon, you know, Teddy, you look at this final score, 24-14, to 14, home win over Idaho last week. What's wrong with Oregon? And, you know, again, I look at box scores uh, like everybody else does to evaluate your plays and see what really transpired in the game. And Oregon racked up 487 yards of offense in this game, and, and they really didn't turn the ball over at a high rate. So you look and say, how did they only win this game 24 to 14? And I think that's a very deceiving final score. Dylan Gabriel, by the way, uh, the transfer quarterback that comes in 41 out of 49 for 330 yards last week. Uh, That type of offensive production will more times than not produce uh, point totals in the mid thirties to early to uh, low forties. And I think uh, the combination of everything I just discussed, uh, Boise State and Oregon over 60 and a half is my play. Real quickly, guys, you were talking about making good bets and continuing to make good bets. This is the type of game I look at um, last week, for example, or last night I had the under in that game in the NFL. And, uh, you know, I look at everything and ask myself in the morning when I assess my picks, would I make the same pick tomorrow? In last night's game, unequivocally, it would be yes. Boise State, Oregon, over 60 and a half in this game. So we just talked a minute ago about under machines uh, in the first game. Oregon's been an under machine. You know, I mean, you, you talked at the misleading box score or misleading final score from week one, but they were catching unders in bunches last year down the stretch. Certainly week one was an under. And from a defensive standpoint, you can't compare what Boise faced last week to what they're going to face this week, certainly in terms of their ability to run the football. Does any of that concern you here? Well, it's always a concern. I mean, when you look at an Oregon defense, really, I mean, they were terrific last week. They gave up 15, 14 points in around 230 yards, if I recall correctly. Uh, but the problem is, I, as I see it uh, for the Oregon defense, uh, they're still going to be a very good unit this year. But the problem that they get presented with in this matchup is what I alluded to, Teddy. Uh, The combination, the balance between run and pass makes Boise State a lot more difficult type of offense to defend than what you normally would be used to at the college football level. And uh, again, a star running back, I'm sure they're going to key on him. I'm sure he's not going to come close to the production we saw last week, but he's still going to put up good numbers. And uh, anytime you have a good running game, it opens up your passing game, obviously. And I think Oregon uh, last week was an aberration, that that 24-point total against Idaho. Uh, I think we're going to look at a team that's going to score, approach the 40-point barrier in this one against a uh, Boise State defense that showed last week against a subordinary opponent in Georgia Southern that they can't stop anybody. So this is the reason why I'm not going to be scared away from uh, all those unders we've seen in the past with Oregon. 